So starting right out, I'm going to get rid of the planes I don't need. Now, if the toolbar at the top looks different than my toolbar, check your zoom settings. Sometimes that's what affects that. And I'm going to hide my front plane and I'm gonna hide my right plane because I'm just gonna work on the top plane for this project. I'm gonna to click top plane on my dice over there in the right and I'm gonna start a new sketch by clicking sketch. Sketch one win mini window asks me which plane I'd like to sketch in. I'd like to sketch in the top plane and I'm gonna name this sketch frame design or something like that. And then I'm gonna hit my green check mark. That brings me back out of the sketch. Now, if I wanna go back into the sketch, I have to double click frame design or hit the red X, I'm out of the sketch. If I wanna go back into the sketch, I wanna double click frame design. So these, this toolbar at the top changes when you're inside a sketch or outside of sketch. So we're gonna hit center point rectangle now that there and I'm going to just grow rectangle out from the origin. The origin is that little black dot in the middle. And then just make it a random size for now, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit D on my keyboard to turn the dimension button, and let's make it a defined size, two and a half by three and a half. The button at the top right there, I'm gonna turn that off, that's the dimension button. And I'm gonna come over to my offset tool, which looks like a thumbs up with a blue and a black line. And I'm going to click that line. It's going to offset that line. I'm going to change the direction by clicking the arrow. I'm going to click all four lines. And then I'm going to turn off the offset button at the top of the toolbar by clicking it. And I'm going to, it's going to ask me how far I want the offset to be. I want it to be 0.5. Uh, that's half an inch. All right. Now, you don't have to follow all of my dimensions, although I do encourage you to get your work fully defined. Now, I'm going to dog ear these corners here. I'm going to do my outer dog ear. And I'm turn my line button off, turn my line button on, do my inner dog ear, and then turn my line button off by clicking it or hitting L on my keyboard. A lot of people will leave the line button on and they'll end up drawing a line everywhere forever, not knowing how to turn it off. So that's, you gotta remember, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Same with the dimension button and everything else. So we've got our dog ears there. And I'm gonna try and space them so that they match the offset distance of 0.5 and that brings my inside dog ear to a very small size so I'm gonna grab my blue line I'm gonna click and drag it I'm just gonna play with where I want it to be to look good and then I'm gonna trim out the corners now the dog ears help with 3d printing whereas the sharp corners can create some warping issues heat in one spot issues and some movement stress issues on the 3d printer Delete the point that's left behind, and now I'm going to play around. How do I want these dog ears to look? What looks good? And, and you don't have to match my style exactly. You can go really rogue if you want, but this is meant to kind of inspire things. So now I'm changing the dimensions that I'd previously set, the three and a half by two and a half dimensions. And so I, I'm not crazy about that. Um, I'm going to go back in and, and reset these and try and get things locked back in. And I've got my inside rectangle, outside rectangle locked in. My dog ears are blue and I'm, I'm okay with that for right now because I'm still playing, trying to decide how I want them to be. A couple pro tips, use two screens if you've got them. You know, watch this on one screen, do it on another screen. Two windows if you need to, but two screens is really helpful. What I'm doing now is I'm drawing a center line. I've got the line tool turned on and I'm hovered it right over the origin. Because we use a center point rectangle, I know that that's gonna be the middle of the rectangle. I'm gonna do that both vertically and horizontally so that we end up with a cross, kind of like a crosshairs going through our part. Now I'm gonna change these lines to construction lines. That's a button up there on your toolbar. It's next to that little arc and that little cube symbol. I'm just kind of wandering across the toolbar right now. There it is. And you can hit Q on your keyboard and what construction lines do you can read that little description that pops up, is they just make it so that you're not making it part of the sketch, really. You're just using them as guidelines so that when we go to three dimensions, they're pretty much ignored. But for now, they help us because instead of drawing four dog ears and trying to make them all the same, I'm gonna show you how to mirror the dog ears, which is what I'm doing right now. So hit the mirror button. It might help to hover over that button and read the little pop-up guiding window, but mirror button, select the line that you want to be the mirror, and then select the sketch entities that you want to mirror. And you'll see that 
boom, all the dog ears have been mirrored. And we end up with a very cool dog-eared picture frame. And the nice thing about this is I can change one, and since they're all referencing the others, I end up with uh, only having to, to change one. And then I keep a symmetric, nice symmetric shape without individually changing all the dog ears. Scissors button, trim command, or I think T on your keyboard. Let's clean up these dog ears a little bit. I'm losing some definition as I do this, but that's all right. And I'll go back and those little points that are left behind, I just click on those and, and hit delete on my keyboard and they disappear. So just uh, those center lines, let's see. And then I don't have my vertical dimension. So I'm gonna add that back in see what happens here okay add some definition back in we modified those lines so the, the, the reference might have been lost when we modified the lines now I'm gonna play with the dog ears again again this is where you can use some creative license here decide how you want them and now I'm gonna angle I'm gonna dimension this dog ear that way I can't change, and we're overdefined. What overdefined means is basically imagine telling a square it has to be a square with one side that's two inches and one side that's four inches. We've asked it to do a geomet geometric impossibility. So this happens frequently, especially for new, new students and still happens to me a lot. What I do is usually trial and error. So I make use of the undo button and I just delete various things and see how it affects and then I click and drag as well so I can figure out what's going on. For right now, if you want, just don't do what I did there and then wait till I kind of figure it out. But those little red squares that popped up, those are constraints like these ones that say you have to be parallel, you have to be touching, you have to be vertical, you have to be horizontal. And sometimes you can actually click on those and delete and see how that changes things and then undo. Now what I've done here is I've dimensioned to the bottom side of the dog ear that it has to be three and a half. So uh, the picture, your wallet picture, the good news is we want to trim the corners to get it to fit in there, but you will end up with a margin above and below it when you put that picture in, if that makes sense. And I've got that set for three and a half and I'm going to work towards getting these fully defined. And I do that by just going ahead and adding an angular dimension. So hit the, 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 hit the dimension button, click two lines, and you should be able to get an angle to pop up when you drag that out and then just lock that in place at whatever angle you think looks good to you. Now I'm gonna delete that point because he's just kind of in there. I like to tidy things up, uh, keep things tidy as I'm designing. My frame design sketch is done. Uh, and I'm back to three-dimensional tools, so I'm going to hit my extrude button. It's going to be a solid extrude and a new extrude. And I'm going to name it solid new. All right, I'm going to name it. What am I going to name it? I don't know yet. Uh, I'm going to sit, select both the inside and outside face because we want the, the back to be solid. So we want both of them extruded. A solid back is what I'll name it. And if I click my dice over here, I can see that it, by default, it automatically extrudes to a depth of one inch, but I'm gonna change that to a depth of 0 0.25. And now we have that shape taking place there. And now I'm gonna do another extrude. I'm gonna turn on my frame design sketch because I couldn't see it before and I wanna be able to see it. So by default, it'll hide it so that you can see what your 3D shape looks like, but you have to go over there and play with that to turn it back on. And I'm going to name this like frame sides or something. And I'm going to go to extrude it. I can't click on the shape I want to extrude because it's on the other face. So I'm going to rotate it so I can get the other face. I can use the dice tool to rotate it or I can use the right click on my mouse. And I'm going to extrude it. And because it's going through the solid back from the back of the back to through it, it changed it from a solid add extrude instead of a solid new extrude. That's fine. And I'm going to set it to 0.5. And there we have something we can put our school picture in, something we can put a magnet on, and 
I'll explore customization options as we go along, but our frame design sketch looks good. I like to go back through the design. You can do that with the rollback bar right here. Go right there and then kind of drag, and you can actually see the process. This is actually really cool for reverse engineering someone else's design too. Um, I'm just tidying up some dimensions. And uh, remember, we use center point rectangle, offset, dimension tool, the mirror tool, the line tool, the trim tool, and just reviewing our process here. And then we go to our first extrude, which is solid back. And there's actually two ways you could do this. You're, you might end up with a variation on yours, and that's fine too, because we did the, the add, we went through the solid back and, and extruded it further and did add, but really you could flip the direction of that, that second extrude, the frame extrude, and make it a new, and that would work. And I'm gonna give you just a quick demo here in case you're like, man, it doesn't look exactly the same. Well, what might have happened here is we got face of frame design extruding, and it's going from the back through the part, but if I click that arrow, it's going from the uh, front up. Oh, and actually, it still has to stay an add component because it's, it's one solid part no matter what. But you can see that the recess changes depth depending on which way you go, because when it goes through the part, it loses that depth. But when it goes on top of the solid back extrude, you don't lose any depth. So that's just something you can play with. You can change direction by clicking the arrow or clicking the arrows inside the extrude window that are next to the word blind. Green check mark, we are done.